We'll call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Branch. Here. Bray. Here. Carol. Graham. Here. Henry. Hussey. Here. Mihalovich. Here. Prather. Here. Schulte. Here. Scrivener. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Um, we're going to begin tonight with uh, item three on our agenda, which is uh, a resolution uh, 2013-40 celebrating Greek and American democracy uh, and uh, would, I guess Drew's going to read that or going to give a synopsis of that or do you need to read it? I, that's all okay. I have is what you okay. just okay. said. Drew? Thank you Mr. Mayor or Mr. President. I uh, had a, a great opportunity to uh, go and hear some great presentations from a group of kids who are here tonight. I was only able to go to one of the two sessions. Uh, and some councilmen joined me as well. And uh, what their goal was, was, and I understand this to be kind of a greater national uh, push, or at least some part of it, uh, to promote the Greek Independence Day and uh, tell local leaders why uh, we should celebrate uh, the Greek heritage, our Greek heritage and uh, a as a country. So we put together a resolution that was a, a a variation of what uh, some folks have proposed to the President of the United States to pass. And so uh, what it does is simply announces that this council does in fact uh, uh, want to uh, celebrate the Greek and uh, Greek culture and their impact on on us, uh, primarily with regard to our form of government, uh, the democracy and, and our republic system form of government is something that we've uh, inherited uh, from ancient Greek. Uh, and so we did this resolution and the kids are here today uh, and uh, what we've what we'd like them to do is maybe after we uh, well it's up to you but after before we vote or after we vote whatever the chair thinks is appropriate we'll have the kids come up just say what their names are and we've got a little uh, gift for them and then at the end we'll do a uh, maybe if the, if the president will indulge a, a picture for us for them uh, but really if you look at our history uh, and these kids could tell you even more about it if, if we let them <laughs> uh, when you look at our, our culture, uh, some of our movies, uh, some of our, our television shows, certainly our, our uh, 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 form of government, and, and so many other things actually come from those ancient Greeks, and, and these kids took a little time out as part of their assignment to kind of show us how that worked, and, and I appreciate it, and know the council people who were there appreciate it. So if you'd like to do the vote first or... However you I like. think that I think that's what we'll do is uh, go ahead and uh, and uh, have a motion to uh, uh, accept the resolution. Motion so and second. So moved. Second. second. Motion and we have a second. Uh, is there any discussion? If not, uh, is this, this is not a roll call. Mm -hmm. Okay, roll call vote then, please. Branch. Aye. Bray. Aye. Graham. 
Aye. Hussey? Aye. Mahalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scribner? Aye. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Um, I just want, wanted, wanted to say um, my job responsibilities kept me from attending either one of the uh, presentations, but I've heard some really great things. Uh, the mayor commented this morning uh, uh, to me about this and said that uh, he felt like probably the, uh, the youngsters making these presentations were probably smarter than he or I, either one, uh, maybe combined. Uh, he was really impressed, and, and I'm sure I would have been as well, and I, I really appreciate the efforts that you made, and I appreciate the fact that you're here tonight. And uh, I don't know if any, any other councilman that might have attended might, might want to uh, have something to say. Uh, if not, we have some, uh, some uh, tokens uh, here of, uh, to kind of, uh, I guess, uh, 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 offer our respect for your efforts and, and what you've done and, and, and uh, the great job that you've done. So if uh, you want to come forward and meet me down front, Thank you so much for having us tonight. These are the students from EER, which is the Public School Gifted Program. And I'm gonna let them introduce themselves just a little bit. Who's here from St. Joe? Who is here from Lawson? Who's here from Bel Air? Who's here from Cedar Hill? Who's homeschooled? Who's a third grader? Who's fourth grader? Who's fifth grader? Okay, these are our students. And they worked really hard on their project. I'm very proud of them. So thank you for inviting us to come. We really hey, appreciate I it. I think we'd be willing to spend a little time if they each want to introduce themselves by sure. name. Sure. We'd be willing to do that. Here you go. My name is Ella Glosser. I'll tell you what, look, over, look in the camera up here. Look, look over here in the camera. Introduce yourself to people at home, too. <laughs> My name is Jordan Denny. My name is Alyssa Lawbridge. My name is Carrington Stillabauer. My name is Meredith Long. My name is Hunter Marsh. My name is Madeline Becker. My name is Sudi Kumar. My name is Ashley York. My name is Chapel Dobbs. My name is Ava Morrissey. My name is Abigail Jansen. My name is Rhett Dobbs. My name is Miles Vaught. My name is Stephanie Dahmer. I don't know if I did. I'm Ruthie Kaplinger. I'm their teacher. Anybody who wants to take a picture, just come on up and get the best shots you can get. Thank you. 
We appreciate having you here, but obviously uh, you don't have to stay if, if you'd uh, like to leave. We, uh, we would certainly understand. Thank you for coming. <coughs> yeah. <You're hurting>. we'll get <laughs> not, that doesn't go for you, Ken. <laughs> get, we'll give them just a second. Uh, the next item on the uh, agenda is a presentation of the Kevin Meinhart Award, and that would be Gail. Thank you. I am so pleased tonight to be able to um, present the first ever Kevin Meinhart Memorial Award for Distinguished Public Service. I'd like to start by introducing Cindy Meinhart which is Kevin's wife, and she came in from Kansas City today I did. to be here for the presentation of this award. And I think you have some family members too. I do. So um, we'd like to thank all of them for coming in. Um, the Kevin Meinhart, I'm sorry, here we go. Uh, Kevin served on the Board of Adjustment from 1997 to 2012. And during that time, he dis demonstrated his commitment to public service and continually represented the highest standards in ethics and professionalism. And because of that, in recognition and gratitude and appreciation to him, um, the Kevin Meinhart Memorial Award for Distinguished Public Service was born. Uh, nominations were submitted. They could be submitted by any member ser serving on a city board, committee, or commission, including any staff liaison or city council member. Um, we received a number of outstanding um, nominations this year, all of whom were very, well, very, very deserving of this award. And I'm glad that I was not the mayor to have to make that decision, because I think that was a tough decision for him. But the candidate selected certainly um, displays all of those things that we looked for, and that was um, public service devotion, excellence and professionalism while serving, outstanding enthusiasm for public service and conduct which reflects the highest ideals of citizenship in their conduct, all of which were traits that Kevin exhibited during his years of service. This year's recipient chairs the Cultural Arts Commission where she spearheaded the birth of the Cultural Arts Foundation, which she also, by the way, serves as the chair of the foundation too. Um, the foundation allows citizens and businesses of Jefferson City to make tax deductible donations to the arts. So I would like to congratulate and invite to the front this year's recipient, who is Lucia Erickson Kinchlow. Before we give, I give her the plaque, I just want to mention a couple of other things. Um, Lucia has served on the Cultural Arts Committee since its inception in March of 2009. She has served as chair, and she has just unanimous, unanimously been elected by her, her co-members to serve as a chair for her third year. So um, she's worked tirelessly putting together projects and agenda items for the commission. She has successfully worked with many art groups, citizens, and businesses in bringing together art projects for our community. She worked very long hours and donated her own money and supplies for some of the fundraisers the commission and the foundation have held. She's also talked with council members and the mayor to gain support for the art projects planned by the commission and the foundation. A few of the programs that she has spearheaded include the three wine tasting events, um, including the most recent Sip and Sit that I know a number of you went to. And just to show um, her enthusiasm and dedication, um, most of you know at the Sip and Sit they had a live auction of rocking chairs that were painted by local artists. And when we, they had a hard time finding more rocking chairs, she plucked a couple off her own porch <laughs> and donated them. And she also painted some of the rocking chairs. So um, if that's not dedication, I don't know. But 
Um, she also helped to spearhead the, the theatrical presentation of the Fantastics along with the Capital Region Foundation and the Connect to the Arts Festival, which was held a couple of years ago. She's working hard to bring park settings and art into the roundabouts. She has a love for both art and serving her community, and it really shows in her commitment to the commission and to the foundation. And I just wanted to say on behalf of the entire Meinhardt family, we are so thrilled that you're receiving this award tonight. I, um, I do want to thank uh, the Meinhardt family and um, the council and, and the mayor and, and all the people that really have been so helpful in the commission, Carrie and Rick, um, who are our liaisons, and, and of course, Eric. But you know, really, you all have really created you know, an atmosphere of trust and respect and uh, for the council um, and the commission to develop a relationship that's allowed us to grow and prosper and create and you really haven't put a time limit on it so we've, you've allowed us to really create a really strong structure that people can build on for the future and um, you know I, I don't want to make this a political statement but you know Obama got the Nobel Peace Prize um, and maybe slightly before he, um, you know, did a lot of peacekeeping. So I hope you'll allow me to hang around for a little while to live up to the legacy of, of your husband. And uh, I thank you all for, um, for your support of the commission. Thank you and the foundation. Okay. bit of indecision there, but I think we're back on track now. Uh, there are no public hearings, so uh, item five is minutes and reports received and filed. Uh, Animal Control Section monthly report for November 2013. Campo Technical Committee, November 7, 2013. Code and contact issue report for November 2013. Uh, item six is Council Committee reports. Uh, Administration Committee, Councilwoman Carroll. Thank you. The Administration Committee met Wednesday, December 4th, and our next meeting will be the first Wednesday of January at 8 a.m. Thank you. Any questions for Councilwoman Carroll? Okay. Uh, item B, Finance Committee. Um, Mr. Schulte. Thank you, President. Um, we are in receipt of our 1% general sales tax uh, for the receipt period of December which was $932,387. Year to date, unfortunately, we're $44,087 behind budget for general sales tax. That same time period, the half cent capital improvement sales tax was uh, the receipts $443,688 uh, year to date, uh, and this is the final month of collections year to date. Uh, we are short $35,400. And twenty dollars. Also, just to update you on the lodging tax, we have uh, through December or through September, we have one million four hundred seven thousand eight hundred thirty-six dollars in um, lodging tax, and our fund balance uh, at this time is three million six hundred forty-seven thousand. The next finance committee meeting is next Tuesday, uh, December twenty-fourth, seven thirty a.m. across the hall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schulte. Any questions uh, on that report? Uh, if not, uh, Public Safety Committee, Mr. Prather. Uh, we do not have a report today since there has not been a meeting, but our next uh, meeting will be held on Thursday, January 2nd, uh, across the hall after the Brown Bagel meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, the Public Works and Planning Committee uh, has not met since our last meeting, and uh, we uh, uh, 
have canceled the December meeting for lack of uh, agenda items and our next meeting will be the third Thursday in January 2014 uh, the uh, January 23rd I guess 2014 um, and uh, on other committee liaison reports uh, uh, I'm the chairman of the city administrator search committee and I will uh, tell you that uh, that search is ongoing uh, as reported in the newspaper uh, we had a number of applicants and uh, we have been uh, in the process of reviewing those <coughs> applications and uh, and uh, going through the process and uh, we should uh, seems like everything is on schedule I guess I'm being a little vague but that's that's probably all I can share with you tonight um, appointments by the mayor city boards uh, were there any other liaison committee uh, reports uh, city boards and commissions uh, we have um, on cultural arts we have Susan Sodergren on CBB Steve Vulcan Dave Gerstner and Cindy Schneiders historic preservation Brent Hemphill and Doug record and environmental quality Pam Barkhouse uh, do I have a motion to approve as Second. So, okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please make known by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, as present, passed as presented. Uh, item eight, presentations from staff, consultants, and invited guests. Uh, Diane Gillespie, uh, presentation of CBB budget. <coughs> If you don't, you can take this one. I've got it, but it's at home. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to uh, come here this evening. Um, I've just handed out to you our proposal for our 2014 budget. Um, and I did email this to you all, and I think I've spoken to a few of you regarding any questions that you did have. Um, I will go in saying with this budget that we did go in pretty conservative. We have a 1.7% increase from the 2013 budget. Um, I do feel like that is where we are going to be. However, as you know, uh, we do have a couple items such as the MSP, the Missouri State Penitentiary, that we're still kind of waiting for sure when we are going to be open. This budget does include MSP revenues and expenses. Um, and in previous discussions that we've had with OA, they are still looking at getting us open for spring. So we are moving forward as though we're going to have it. Um, if we find out that that's gonna change, the budget may have to be revised. A Couple of the items um, that I will point out to you um, that we have changed a little bit. That, I mean, it's pretty much the same as last year's. If you do look at um, marketing, we did increase that budget by 7.4 percent um, and some of those items are in internet marketing that we're going to be doing for MSP and for the city of Jefferson along with um, some sponsorships to bring events into our community um, we have bid feeds or groups are asking for some sponsorships so we've added a little bit more money in there to maybe help bring in more events into our community as we move forward um, otherwise, there's not a whole lot of other changes um, that really kind of pop out to you. Um, I know I visited with uh, Mr. Scrivener this morning, so he may have some additional questions or if any of you do. Questions? Oh, come on. Have you, has uh, anyone, uh, does anyone have any questions? Anyone had a chance to review the budget? Have any questions? As Diane said, she and I did get together this morning for about an hour, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I appreciated your uh, update and information Absolutely. at that time, and you answered my questions, but I don't know. Yes, Rick. Uh, do you have any idea when you might hear about MSP as to when you, you, when you can start? Or? Sure. We met with Drew and myself and OA met a couple weeks ago, and they are still saying the 1st of March, which is when our normal tour seasons, or the 1st of April. Um, but the, so we, but we have not started taking reservations, I will say that much, individual reservations. We have taken some group reservations, but we have them on call. 
and we will be meeting with OA after the first of the year conf to confirm when we're going to move forward. Um, so as soon as we have final word, we will move, we will go with it. Um, as you know, our tour season runs March the 1st through the, through the end of November. Uh, March is always kind of iffy because of weather. And as you know, March of uh, 13, we had so much snow that we actually ended up canceling quite a few tours. So in my discussions with OA, I said, you know, March is kind of one of those iffy months that if we have to lose it, it won't hurt us horribly um, as long as we can get up and get going, say, by April or May. That'd be great. And the reason they couldn't quite give us a firm date yet is because it's a wacky, you know, December and January, tough construction seasons. So it'll depend, a lot of roof work, so it'll depend on some weather and, and wind and stuff to make sure those conditions are met. They're, as Diane said, they appeared very hopeful, but yes. didn't want to give us firm dates till they get farther into the deal. Any other questions about the budget? Uh, Ms. Carroll. I think y'all make a comment. I serve as the liaison to the Convention and Visitors Bureau Board, mm -hmm. and um, I just wanted to thank you and your staff for being so thorough on the budget, and I know the board has done an excellent job yes. of um, really reviewing this at every board meeting and also um, uh, taking the situation with the MSP and being able to handle that very well. You all really did, thank and uh, with the museum above your your space there on high street is really coming along nicely so yes. there's been a lot of things happening since you came on board mm -hmm. that you've taken <laughs> on and really done a fine job you and your staff because your staff thank is you. really excelling at uh, marketing our community so i just wanted to thank you for that thank you very much and i would like to say i appreciate the city's support on the msp um you know it's kind of one of those that we thought everything was going to turn out right but you still have it kind of dangling your over your head if it is so uh, we do feel like the city and the state have come together and we will be able to move forward with this. Um, any, any other questions? I just want to make a comment. Uh, part of this, uh, oh, I'm sorry, did you yeah. have, no, okay, go ahead, good. go ahead. Uh, I'll are, are the employees uh, CVB, city employees? No, they're not. Okay, and how, how is it different? We are um, contracted with the city. We are a destination marketing organization that is contracted with the city. So we are not per se state or city employees. But we do try to follow some of the city guidelines just because of our relationship and the contract that we do have. Okay, any other questions? Uh, one of the, the items that's in this report, it's really not the budget, but one of the things right. that uh, Councilman uh, Holovic uh, was uh, instrumental in, I think, is uh, asking for uh, some metrics and, and uh, performance measures. Correct. And uh, you'd included those in there. And I was real interested to read some of this material, and I'm not going to ask you to tell us all about it, but I think it's kind of reflects positively on the uh, CVB. Thank you. And uh, how it's part of the fabric of the economic development Absolutely. And, and promotion of the community. Absolutely. And uh, one of the things I noticed that was impressive to me, uh, you know, I, I, from time to time I have, in fact, I had a, <laughs> I talked to a person today in the coffee shop who said, I just can't believe anybody wants to go and tour the prison. Why would anybody <laughs> want to do that? And I, I shared with them that, according to your report, that there had been people from 21 different states mm -hmm. that uh, had come and toured uh, that prison. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the most of them were from uh, Missouri but we had uh, I said 21 states actually one of the uh, on the list here is from Canada right uh, also Massachusetts uh, is quite a ways uh, from us uh, New Hampshire is another yes. one uh, Florida uh, of course Minnesota Arkansas Arizona Th those are a long ways that people have come uh, to tour the prison and and uh, you indicated to me day today in our meeting that uh, you'd really just kind of gotten the tour buses, uh, the coaching, yes. the coach industry, uh, kind of in the fold and starting to be interested in sending mm -hmm. tours and so forth uh, when we had to cancel. Yes. But uh, you're already getting inquiries, you indicated, uh, well, uh, for next year. Absolutely. Um, you know, a lot of this is, the vi is just individual reservations, visitors coming in, but we have started seeing an impact on these from the motor coach industry. So if you see the large motor coaches running around the community, a lot of them are coming in because of MSP, but then we also, you know, let them know what else is here in Jefferson to see, but it has been a good anchor for Jefferson City. It's made us a destination. 
uh, for those motor coaches in this fall, even with all the MSP things, we had a group that came in and spent four nights and they used 50 rooms, so that's 200 room nights just from a motor coach group um, that we were able to bring in and use Jefferson City as our spoke. And we went out to Fulton and Herman and up to Warm Branch Springs up there. So we're kind of looking at that as another market for us to explore. But we're seeing some impact from it, and it is growing. And um, I, your report here says that um, that there had been a study done by Dr. Michael Kalin at the mm -hmm. University of Missouri that indicated $53.63 per head per night when people spend the night in Jefferson City from outside town. We, we put that in as for uh, on the low side. It may not mean that they spend the night, but they are coming into Jefferson City and buying a ticket to go to MSP or to other attractions, but they're also going and vi visiting our restaurants buying gas and visiting our retails. So that's where they came up with the 53.63 for a day, day tripper so they coming in. Need, that's a day tripper. That's a day tripper. So that doesn't even include the overnight stays. So, and I think that's pretty low, but I always go pretty conservative. Um, but I think that's a realistic number that people can grab hold of and go, okay, I believe that. Okay. It makes sense to you. All right. Well, I, I appreciate you uh, coming tonight. And uh, I guess one last question. Uh, is this report on your website if someone wants it to? It is not yet. Um, I will say that we are in the process of updating our website. We hope to have it ready by the first quarter of 2014. We will get it on there, though, so that it is um, available for anybody to see that they would, or they can always email us. Um, we will have it available. But on in the back tab, I will just mention is that those are the performance measures measurements, um, kind of a recap of those that were in our contract that I went through and just kind of put into a format so that maybe you guys could look at that. And if you have any questions at any time, please don't hesitate to call us and we'd be glad to sit down and visit with you. Outstanding, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Drew, I'd ask you, did, did we put a copy of this on our city website, do you know? I don't know if we did, but we, we I, I can. Think we, I think it would be good sure. to have that on there. I think it, this is a part of our overall, overall economic development uh, efforts in the community and and uh, I think it'd be something good to have on our sure. website as well okay next item or the next person is uh, Alan Pollock housing America contest My name is Alan Pollock, and I'm the executive director of the Housing Authority. For those of you that don't know me, I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to help me recognize these two young children who are passing out copies of calendars to you. Uh, first, I need to introduce them. Uh, their mother, Donna Adams, is here. This is uh, Donna Page. And this is Jalen. And I also have a commissioner here. Well, I guess actually he's your commissioner, but Denny Miller is a commissioner on the Housing Authority Board. Uh, I'm here, or we are here to ask your help in recognizing these two children. Every, for the last six years, there is a contest held nationally by the National Association of Housing and Redevelopment Officials which is one of the big housing groups in Washington, D.C. And through its state chapters, ours is called Missouri Niro, there's a poster contest that asks the children of residents of assisted housing or affordable housing to answer the question, what does housing mean to me? Um, Last year, P 
Page submitted an entry and was recognized on the state level. This year, she was submitted an entry again uh, and won first place in the elementary grade level. That automatically went to national, and her poster, which you see on the screen, is uh, was one of the 12 national winners, and those appear in the two calendars. Uh, Jalen won at our state level for, uh, as an honorable mention. I think this was the first year you submitted. Uh, we're real proud of both of them, but especially proud of Paige, who received the national recognition for this program. I might say they are, this family, are former residents with us. They are now living in their own unit. Um, this picture, now this is Jalen's poster. As you can see by the poster, um, Jalen intends, he's in the fourth grade, but he's already pretty dead set that he wants to pursue a military career. And if you look closely at the lower right-hand corner, it says West. And I knew they didn't go to West School, and it suddenly dawned on me he's seeking to go get an appointment to West Point. Uh, on Paige's uh, poster, you can see it's pretty obvious she wants to study, a, be, have a career in the medical field and become a doctor. So we've asked the mayor, I don't know who's going to do this, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there are, there's a certificate and some envelopes up there with the orange bow. Let me tell you what those are. Uh, the Housing Authority has presented Jalen, and that's in that envelope with his name on it, a 25 gift certificate from the Board of Commissioners for his winning honorable mention. Paige's list is a little bit longer. She will be presented with a framed copy of this poster, excuse me, which is the original poster as well as a $100 savings bond. We don't have those yet because that association is housed in Washington, D.C. and We all know that everything goes really smooth and quick coming out of Washington. As Soon as we get those, we will get them to the family. The Missouri chapter of NIRO is the awarding the certificate and there's a $50 gift card for her use and the board, the Housing Authority Board is providing a $100 gift card. It was an interesting conversation about whether we should buy savings bonds or not. It was unanimous, these kids don't want savings bond, give them some cash, so it's Christmas time. Just thought I'd throw that in there. So we're real proud of this family having lived with us for several years and now are out on their own and having two children like this that are willing to submit to a contest and even better get win the contest. So this is Paige Crumley and this is Jalen Frank and these are our two award winners. And Alan, we've thrown in a couple of city coins just to honor the occasion as well. I think I'm way more nervous than these children are. I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> hey,
tell you what, the, the future's in great hands from what we've seen tonight, wouldn't you think? I think so. Okay, the next thing is Janice McMillan uh, regarding planning and protective services department reorganization. Janice? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on if um, Greg, if you could go to the next slide. This slide shows uh, the current organization in the department. Um, yeah, as of the present time, we have four operational divisions. Uh, MPO, planning and zoning, inspections, and redevelopment and grants. And this organization has been in place since 2011. And you'll notice that the inspection division uh, contained 10 persons. It's by far the largest division in our small department. Um, up until Ron Davenport retired, we had 20.5 uh, <coughs> full-time equivalent positions. So that's our current organization. In order to take advantage of some, of some efficiencies, um, and Greg, if you'd go to the next slide, the proposal is to expand the number of operating divisions to five and that would include um, MPO and redevelopment grants which would experience no change and out of the inspection division create a development services and uh, code enforcement and property maintenance section so those would come out of the inspection division. Uh, the development services would also bring in the planning and zoning division into that mix. And then the environmental health, which has been always been its own work group, would also function as a separate uh, division. So that's how the uh, organization would look. It would flatten it out, uh, take advantage of some efficiencies and natural relationship among the divisions and I think make us more responsive to achieving the city's goals. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I guess I would have a question. Uh, this is a change that is not just in response to the change in personnel but it's a it's a change that is one that you consider long-term uh, reorganization? Yes. Um, when you look at how our division uh, provides services, especially in the development services end. Um, those, those staff members work a lot with the same uh, staff and, and with the same uh, members of the public, consultants, um, contractors, developers. So that's a natural relationship and I think would provide some efficiencies there. On the code enforcement side, uh, those folks are uh, some of them are working together now and uh, so makes more sense to let them work as a code enforcement division and, and be charged with with working those uh, issues citywide. Okay. Any, any questions from council? Mr. Gilbert. I just wanted to say there's no title changes, no salary increases. This is strictly moving people around. Okay. Very good. Well, you know, you, you were challenged to do more with less, and if this helps you to do that, then that's exactly uh, mm -hmm. what we are happy to see you do. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Moving on, um, find my place here. Uh, we have an announcement by Mayor, Council, and staff, and I guess in this case, staff, Mr. Hilbert. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just want to remind the public the filing period for uh, City Council ends tomorrow at 5 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay. No, item 10, presentations from the gallery on specific bills or resolutions. At this time, I think we only have one person signed up. That would be Mr. Tim Stallman wanting to speak about Bill 120. Mr. Stallman. Uh, please state your name and address for the record and limit your remarks to five minutes, please. Tim Stallman, 2204 Melody Drive, Jefferson City, Missouri. Um, I have read bill number 2013-120 concerning guidelines for economic incentives policies and have the following comments. And this was the uh, sponsored by Councilman Schulte, this item. Um, 
The public needs to be informed when TIFs, SIDs, NIDs, TIDs, and Chapter 100 bonds are being proposed, and we deserve an election to approve any bond issuance or other indebtedness. The laws creating these creative financing methods have intentionally reduced the taxpayer's ability to understand and put the brakes on this alphabet soup of financing schemes. The business groups, who are the secret authors of these laws, knew the public would never buy into these partnership scams, so they set up a scheme that sidesteps elections and hoodwinks the taxpayers. Bit by bit, we are losing our democracy, and failure to keep the public informed is one cause of that. I am proposing adding a Part 6 and Part 7 to Section 25-301, General Policy and Procedural Guidelines, under Section B, General Procedural Requirements, as follows. 6. Public participation is the lifeblood of democracy in our city, and public notice is the trigger for that participation. It shall be the policy of the City of Jefferson to go above and beyond the statutory public notice requirements for any of the laws creating economic incentives. To that end, the City will provide notice to the public within three working days of the initial official document being filed with the City as outlined in Part 3 above, which triggers the review process. This public notice shall include press releases to all the local media, including TV, radio, and newspapers having a subscription base. The city must also have a summary of all the, of the project available for viewing on the city website. Two weeks before any official hearing on an economic development matter, the city shall cause a notice to be placed in the official county newspaper large enough to be easily seen not a little tiny one like we got last time. This is in addition to other legal notices. And seven, it shall be the policy of the city council to not approve any bond issue without a vote of the citizens approving the issuance of those bonds. And I understand that that's probably not gonna go down well with you, but it's needed. Other thoughts, the city must never allow what happened to Moberly happen to our city. Under a, a General Policy Matters number 5, this document seems to discourage participation by minorities and other groups with less business experience than the already rich and powerful, or those with established business connections. This needs to be rewritten to encourage these groups, not to scare them away. Where is the provision for yearly audits so the public doesn't get robbed? Where is the requirement for yearly reports to the public published in a newspaper for all to see? It needs to be there. These public-private partnerships are an accident waiting to happen. Every precaution should be taken to make sure that these economic policies do not favor the already wealthy. No wonder the rich are getting richer and the middle income class is dropping like a rock. These policies seem to promote that income disparity. If we aren't careful, we'll end up with a caste system like they have in India if we don't already. And I would like to pass out a copy of my remarks to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I don't know if you want to, uh, if you want to have anything to say or any questions of Mr. Hilpert in response to that at this time, or if you want to wait till later in the agenda, but I'll give you that opportunity. Okay, uh, seeing no, uh, no hands, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, number 11, the consent agenda. 
meetings of city council meeting or excuse me minutes of city council meetings december 3rd and december 9th 2013 approval of cvb budget grant acceptance from mckay area greenway uh, do i have a motion to approve the consent agenda second we have a motion and a second uh any further discussion all in favor signify by saying aye uh, are there any opposed? It's passed unanimous, unanimously. Uh, there are no bids over 50,000. Item 13, bills introduced. <laughs>